I actually developed the term uh, design experiment. We were writing a proposal for the Center for Technology and Education, and they wanted an assessment plan. And so I, I came up with the term design experiments to describe ways of studying um, uh, technology innovations in school settings. So that was the original origin. It was Anne Brown who made design experiments famous by writing an article that was in the Journal of Learning Sciences. Um, and she talked about her program with Joe Campione on the fostering a community of learners that she was doing. She started in Urbana and worked later in Oakland uh, schools to uh, create a new learning environment. And, and she talked about the ways, the different ways she analyzes um, what kids are learning and how they're participating. Now, um, a lot of uh, our concerns were that we needed a new methodology, that the experimental methodology that uh, we inherited from psychology made it very difficult to study what's happening in, in classrooms where, where the, the situation is uh, fairly complicated, but we did want to push toward a a rigorous uh, way to study what is actually happening. Um, and the, the key idea that both of us were pushing was a notion of progressive refinement. That is, you, you try a design out, you observe carefully how what's happening in the, in the, uh, in the setting, and uh, you may collect quantitative data, you may create qualitative data, data uh, collect qualitative data, but basically you're trying to figure out uh, what's working, what's not working, how to modify it, what, and, and a lot of the, the kinds of information you collect might come from uh, uh, talking to students. Um, it might come from observing patterns of interaction. It might come from looking at motivational variables. Um, one of my big issues, uh, and I try to emphasize this in a recent article uh, in the Journal of Learning Sciences, is that we need to pay attention to more than just learning outcomes on a, uh, a set of content tests. That we need to pay attention to um, sort of what I call um, engage, uh, variables about how things are happening, like engagement and uh, cooperation, um, um, risk-taking. Um, so, so there's variables that are describing the classroom as it, as it happens. There are variables about learning gains, and we need a wider notion of those kinds of variables. Um, th those include things like content, but also the various kinds of uh, stills, metacognition, and I, I would emphasize dispositions. Um, it turns out that, that dispositions are, are critical things to learn about. Uh, if you're going to succeed in the world, in college, in work, you need to uh, know how to complete projects, you need to uh, want to work hard, you have to be interested in, in figuring things out. So those kinds of dispositions are, um, are key to success and we don't have any assessment uh, uh, tests that look at them, but we need to worry about those. And then finally we need to uh, worry about Variables like um, sustainability, how easy something is to adopt, how much it costs, how much uh, uh, teach, how much um, training teachers need in order to, to, to put those in. So, so uh, there are uh, 
these, these three different kinds of variables and we need to pay attention in a much broader way when we look at innovations. So I, I, I'm pushing for that to become a major issue. Now there is another um, uh, issue that uh, uh, comes up in the work of Tharp and Gallimore. They, they worked with uh, Kamehameha, an early education project, and this went on for 15 years, their work in, in Hawaii. And they were working with Hawaiian children on literacy issues in particular, uh, where they, they had trouble in, uh, in American-style schools. So they set up their own little school in order to develop literacy programs for these kids. And they, they've written about methodology in that setting. And I, I just want to, uh, they say you need four kinds of what they call meta-methods. Um, one is experimentation. And Ann Brown, this is very similar to Ann Brown's position, that we need to, to view the kind of psychological training studies that we used to do as an important uh, element of an overall methodology. Um, a second kind of method is program evaluation. It's uh, doing large-scale studies, usually randomized trials. And that's what you do when you have a program that's, that's uh, been refined to the point where it's worth testing. You don't want to <laughs> use program evaluation methods until you have something that, that's, that's working pretty well. Um, the third methodology they talk about is data guidance, and that um, is basically what what the uh, kind of writing I was doing about design experiments it is is it's it's a kind of a uh, trying out different ways of doing things in classroom settings and and looking at the interactions that occur. So one of the things they looked at was peer tutoring. With, with a data guidance kind of method. And then the final method they talk about are qualitative methods uh, and, and personal knowing, which I think they should separate. But, but um, a lot of your decision making is based on your, the, the, the background uh, that you've, you've, uh, you've had in working with schools and in, in learning environments. And so you need to, and you need to look very systematically using qualitative methods to figure out what's worth changing. So that's their four method, meta methods. And, and I think they, they uh, as they point out with the Project Keep, they, they refined the thing over a period of three years, and then they tried program evaluation when they thought they had a, a, a system that was working, and they showed no gains whatsoever. So then they went back and spent another year and a half refining further. And uh, after that second period of time, they showed very large gains on, on, uh, on uh, standardized literacy test uh, scores. So, um, so program evaluation is something that comes in later. And, and uh, they were using a randomized uh, uh, trial. Kind of technique. So um, the other issue I, I think we ought, I ought to talk a little bit about is the emphasis on theory. Um, in I think in my early writing and Ann Brown's early writing, there wasn't a lot of discussion about theory. But as as the community has evolved and grown bigger, there's been more and more emphasis on articulating the theoretical underpinnings and using the data to try to refine the theory as well as the practice. In other words, so keeping those as two different poles. And so as we move forward in, in the design research community, and I, I use that term now rather than design experiments, uh, because I think that's the way the, the terminology is moving. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we need to try to articulate our theoretical understandings as well as just, you can refine practice uh, 
but unless you try to pull out the theoretical implications for, for the design of learning environments in general, then uh, I think we're not doing our job. And in some sense, that theoretical emphasis is what really sets design research apart from, say, action research. There's much more of an emphasis on thinking broadly. I think a major impetus for, for the growth of the design research community has been the fact that you're designing technological um, artifacts often to put into classroom settings. And engineering, ha or engineering and design has a whole methodology for, for uh, trying to improve the products they produce. Uh, or the designs they produce, and so, so a lot of that that worldview, that viewpoint, is seeping into the education community because we're doing more engineering in a certain sense, uh, because we're working with uh, computer-based environments a lot of the time. So, so I think that's partly where this emphasis on design research is coming from.